did in my lighter for my candle. Oh, here it is. Okay, there's still a little bit of wax left. So, this is part three of the Thanksgiving. Alrighty, so, um, <clears throat> Uh, basically I made part two already of this, um, Thanksgiving special, um, but part two ended just kind of like on a good positive note about like, um, just focusing on yourself and loving yourself. Um, but I just feel like there were some like unanswered questions when it came to, um, certain relationships um in your life right now at the moment and with thanksgiving only two days away i thought it would be beneficial to just finish this out with um the final overall <laughs> energy here so i'm gonna go ahead and pull some of my golden arch nuave cards first and then the office cards as well okay so let's see. Ooh, Empress energy. Yes, I love this. You are choosing this energy over all the other energies. I gotta say, like, this is coming out. Empress number three. This is part three. Um, this makes a lot of sense to me because part one was, you know, about um, focusing on kindness, focusing on um, acts of kindness and what kindness means. And part two was kind of like a lot of energies, emotional energies, emotions all at once. And the Empress energy here is really one of like focusing on key important things like self-care, self-love, nurturing, um, you know, she is the ultimate, like, goddess of um, acts of kindness and doing goodwill towards others, you know, especially being the motherly nurturer that she is and the energy that she embodies. So that's really beautiful energy to come out. And it just makes sense, you know. It's like at the end of the day, you have this energy that is just um, – you do things out of the kindness of your heart. You really do. And you focus on people and their feelings. And even if they're adults <laughs> and they're supposed to like, you know, be able to maintain some healthy emotional boundaries, like, you know, that's not always going to happen. You know, that's not always true. Um, but you still maintain that, you know, being kind is really the answer here regardless. Um, okay. Yeah. King of cups. This was in the reading previously as well. And I feel like that's where you need to focus in your en empress energy, like lead with that empress energy as you go out on like this quest or this adventure that, you know, you're not excited to go on. You're not thrilled about. Um, but you're moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Like you're doing it because you know, it's the right thing to do, even though it's like a mother hen looking after the baby chicks, right? It's like the mother hen, she just wants a break. She just wants to like have some me time to herself, but she knows that there's work that needs to be done and she is preparing herself for that. Um, yeah, look, this was in the other reading too, only it came out in reverse. Now it's coming upright. So two of cups is finally there is some balance between the masculine and feminine energies. Finally, there is some harmony. Um, you, I think you've like had enough of, um, what you were dealing with, what you were going through. Um, and you've had to like have your say, so, you know, a mother, she always has to have like the final say, you know, especially if it's like a matriarchy, especially if she's the leader of the family. Um, she knows the children best. She knows what's going on with everyone's emotions or she tries to at least. And then if there's some kind of miscommunication, which I feel like was happening with the other reading, um, and you were trusting in your intuition with that and the high priestess was coming out with that. So now it's all leading up to this, um, balance and harmony. Yeah. There are going to be some you know, pride, you know, hurt, ego hurt, you know, um, 
you know, moments there. Um, this man, obviously, he's been hurt, and he can you can tell by his eyes, you know, he's watching his back very carefully to make sure no other messages are coming in that are like wishing him harm. Um, and he's very holding on very steadily to his own wand. So, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna draw the last four here for you. So, um, this is the Six of Swords. Okay, this man is the same man from this image, pretty much. I mean, he might have changed his shirt, but he still looks like maybe he could be the same man. And I feel like you have gotten a little bit older, a little bit wiser over the years, and now you know where you're headed, like where you're going, what you're purposes, um, you know, to protect the mother and the child, right, is to lead um, by example. So the Empress, while very feminine um, energy, you can take from this that she has to use um, a sort of Knight of Cups masculine energy you know, back then women even like might have disguised themselves as men, you know, um, or Viking women, they had to, um, there were shield maidens. And I feel like you have a very like masculine side that comes out when you're trying to protect um, yourself, your mind, your peace of mind, and you're willing to go and leave a um, not so great environment just for the sake of the woman and the child, like stepping up and standing up for yourself. Um, yeah, nine of pentacles. Okay. So this also came out in reversed in part two. And I was like, why is it coming out in reversed? So it came out in reverse before because you were still trying to figure out how you're going to manage all of these other people's emotions and energies that are coming in as the holiday gets closer. And, um, it seems like people want to use your resources or your hard work and not pay you fairly or not reward you fairly for your hard work. But you are going to reward yourself fairly. You already know your worth and your value, and you're not going to compromise that. I feel like the Nine of Pentacles and the Empress card, they worked side by side. You know, the Empress uses her loving, nurturely, kind energy to um, make financial gains for herself and her family. And, um, yes, you, the empress has to go off independently at times and work alone, but that doesn't mean she separates herself from, um, the energy of needing to come back home or even leave an environment that's not, um, in the best interest of her family. Okay. So, it's a very, it's interesting because it's like you can work with these feminine and masculine energies to create something very beautiful here. Um, yeah. Okay. Four of swords and the magician. I feel like the four of swords is you needing a time of peace and time of rest. You've been really hard at work creating something and putting something together that's going to be really, truly beautiful and amazing. And you are a magician when it comes to this beautiful work that you do. You're very creative. You have a lot of good ideas and you do deserve a break from time to time. Like, don't forget that. I know as a mom, we all need breaks, right? Um, and we shouldn't feel guilty about that. So I feel like once you put that empress energy to work and start channeling that magician energy and that creative spark that you have inside you, you're going to come out with this like beautiful masterpiece. You know, maybe you're cooking for Thanksgiving. Maybe you're hosting everyone for Thanksgiving. I know I am. So it's a lot of work. It's definitely not easy. And you have these other energies around you that are like not understanding why you want to do the things you want to do. And you want to do them because they um, are emotionally satisfying for you and you are rewarded for it. And you love showing your creativity. You love showing your talents. You can toot your own horn, you know, and the magician can do a lot of cool creative things. And that's what you're like focused on and then you need to break afterward. And that's only, that's normal, right? So, but now here comes these other energies, which I want to clarify the energies from part two that were like, 
Um, this could be the nine of wands. You know, it could be like you're holding tight to something here um, and you're watching your back and you're like, you need to leave an environment or, you know, a situation, um, to protect yourself and to protect your family. So I just want to clarify, um, a little bit more about that because that energy I think is what explains part two is like in part two, you were surrounded by all these upside down energies that were just not thinking clearly. Okay. Knight of Pentacles just flew out. Daryl. Yeah. He was in part two as well. Like you, this is for you is about being rewarded for your efforts and your value. And I don't think these people understand that you're not being rewarded for your efforts. So that could be why you were dealing with that. Okay. Yeah. High Priestess. Phyllis. Yeah, I was thinking about this card a lot today. You know, Phyllis is a really interesting character because um, she's very quiet and doesn't really say a lot. But, like, there's these moments where she does stand up for herself and she does speak up. And um, it's really impactful because it's coming from a character who doesn't often talk a lot, right? She's not like Dwight who talks constantly all the time or Michael who's always full energy. She's a very calm energy. Um, and she brings that to the office, to the environment. And I feel like you bring that energy to this environment that you go into. You're very calm. You're very loving. You're very, um, just relaxed. You know, you don't have a lot to say. You're just there to, you know, bring a very calm, just, familiar energy, almost like an empress energy, but it's like, you don't have like, it's like empress and it's like empress energy, but it's like, you don't have to do a lot, right? You can do a little bit and it makes a huge impact, right? Um, yeah, nine of wands. See, there's the nine of wands coming out again twice. So this nine of wands is, you know, this man is hurt. He's got a bandage on his head. Um, he's watching his back. And then this is Dwight saying, like, yeah, he's watching his back too. He's on his farm, Shroot Farms. He knows that he um, is a successful businessman when it comes to his farm. And, you know, he doesn't have to work at Dunder Mifflin, but he does it because he gets bored from just being out in the field all day. And I feel like you get maybe get a little bit restless from having to watch your back all day out on the farm, like <laughs> metaphorically, you know, from work, hard work all the time. It, it becomes draining after a while. And like, you still want to work, but you don't, but it has to be something fun. You know, it has to be something you can challenge yourself and it's enjoyable. Um, so there's that energy coming through and I don't, I'm just trying to make sense of this. Okay. Oh, look, there we go. Magician twice. There we go. That makes sense. Yeah. There's Ryan. He's the mischievous one. He's up to tricks. You know, he, he one minute he's an intern, the next minute he's like Michael's district manager. So that's a huge uh, shift. Okay. There's something on here. It says, property of Michael Scott. Like he took Michael Scott's magician outfit. Um, and Michael treats him as like his son. Right. Um, so <laughs> yeah, like this is like a, some fun, lighthearted energy, like coming into like some very strong, non-fun energy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Eight of Wands. There's Ryan again. And there's Eight of Nine of Wands. Yeah, this Eight of Wands was in your other part two reading. And the Eight of Wands was in reverse. It was like uncomfortable, like uncomfy feelings, uncomfy messages coming into you. This is like, no, we're going to have good messages. We're going to have positive messages. No more uncomfy feelings, right? Even though Ryan, he came up with this whole idea for 
you know, to have this investment on his Wolf app that would just send you faxes and emails and texts all at the same time. And then it turned out to not be such a great idea, but then it turned out where he could just make like a little profit. And it was this whole episode on it. So where even got some of the people in the office to invest. So I feel like you're one of those people, you know, like you bring this calm, lighthearted energy, but you can also like bring a little bit of fun and like, um, creative spark as well. Um, and that can be channeled into this energy of like needing to make sure everybody's feelings are like, Oh, everybody's feelings. Oh yeah. Let's make sure everyone is like, you know, and these are adults we're talking about. Okay. This isn't like, you know, you're, you might actually be a mom <laughs> like me. Um, but that's a different, whole different concept. You know, when you're a mom and you have kids, they're, they're your whole life. They're your whole world. You know, you want them to feel happy. You want them to be safe. And then you, you know, go to an environment where there's other adults and there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of, you know, this like weird energy in the room and you're trying to like just exist there. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, maybe tapping into a little bit of like that fun, goofy magician energy, you can make a tense environment a little bit less tense. Um, yeah, seven of wands. You know, you got to be careful here because here's Michael, you know, we just goofing off and then Ryan, it looks like, and Dwight are like coming at him, right? So, you know, you have... Ryan here as the magician coming in with some good ideas that might not be like they're fun, you know, they're creative. And then you have seven of wands, um, Dwight and Ryan going at Michael. You got, oh gosh. Yeah. Eight of swords. Dwight's losing his mind. Yeah. Um, I get that, you know, the holidays are very stressful. You're losing it. You're like, oh my gosh, everything's out of control. I can't keep everything straight. What's going on? You know, um, there's that chaos. Um, 10 of wands. Yep. Michael's super stressed. Yeah. So it's best boss. Yeah. I get it. The holidays are very stressful. I'm stressed out. Like, you know, there needs to be a break. There needs to be some time for fun. Um, and it seems like, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> just chaos. I would say chaos because the magician can be very chaotic energy if it's not directed to the right things. Okay, the star. This is a good solution for any chaos that you're facing is like, just be yourself. You know, Erin, she didn't always like make a lot of sense. She didn't always know what was going on. Um, but over time, she became more self-aware, kind of like a small child. And she, the star card reminds me a lot of inner child. So does the sun card. So the star card is like, you're bright, you're beautiful, you're amazing. Remind yourself of that. Remind yourself how special and unique you are. And it doesn't matter if you don't get along with everybody. It doesn't matter if things don't go all according to plan. Um, the Empress is always like, let's make a plan. Everyone is having fun. It's all like calm, relaxed. But then you have energies, right, that just come in and they start, you know, messing things up. So you have to like readjust and how you readjust is remembering your value, remembering to trust your intuition, knowing your worth and that you are a hard worker, but sometimes you need to put that, you need to put some more fun into your work, right? There needs to be, um, you need to take like a chance on yourself, right? And that's what Dwight does is he takes a chance on himself that he could be a good salesman. He could work in an office setting. He could socialize with other people. Because remember, Dwight grew up on a farm, very isolated, homeschooled by people who only spoke German, basically. And, you know, their Christmas was uh, with um, <sighs> that creepy Santa, right? Belschnickel, right? Um, so 
he has a lot of different traditions that aren't very traditional to most American office workers, but they still, you know, at the end of the day, they still treat him like family, right? He was still family to them. So I feel like for you, it's like you have to um, be yourself, you know, and other people can either gravitate toward that and be like, cool, that's cool, right? We'll invest in you. We'll invest in that. Or they could be the opposite of that. And they could come at you and say no. And they then you're like, ah, like eight of swords. I'm trapped. I can't be myself. What do I do? Like, I don't know how to get out of this. And then you could be overwhelmed and tired and exhausted with like this heavy weight on your shoulders. Like, look, literally Michael has like his little paper mache version of him on his shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Like you could like, you feel depressed, but you're forced to smile. You know what I'm saying? So the star card, Erin, she was always being like goofy and smiling and like oblivious, like unaware, like ignorance is bliss, right? Until over time, she learned that her ability to not let other people's thoughts and opinions of her, um, cause she always felt guilty, you know, like with Gabe, she dated Gabe and he was really weird and into like Japanese anime, like gore and st- gore movies. And that wasn't her style. You know, she was more into like goofy things and like Andy, then she realized Andy was like super goofy and like did not take her seriously enough in their relationship. And he wasn't very romantic. And then she met um, P, right? Or Plop. And he was just the right amount of goofy, just the right amount of serious. And they ended up getting together. So I feel like for you, because and the other part you're reading, there was like this relationship stuff about a partner or, you know, being single sort of energy. And I feel like it's okay for you to still be trying to figure out who you're, who you are. And then eventually once you figure that out, then you meet the person, right? Because Erin had to figure out who she was first and gain her own independence and gain her own insight on herself and trust in herself first before she can make the commitment to be with a guy she knew like complete you know fully understood her and open herself up to romance again because she had gone through a couple of pretty weird (laughs) breakups you know so um yeah that's a good reading yeah six of pentacles and part two angela was like doesn't didn't know where to live. She was looking at buying a 10 online. And then here comes Oscar offering her a place to live, opening his home to her, offering her the key to, you know, less financial burden, right? And financial stress. Okay. So I feel like you have to just sort of be open to the possibility, like asking for help, or if help is offered, you accept it instead of denying it because you might just need help. You know, you can't do it all alone by yourself, and that could be leading to overwhelming stress. Um, and oh, yeah, look, <laughs> the hangman. This came out in reverse in your last reading, too. So, the hangman, of course, this is going to be like. Here, Kevin is made a pot of chili, right? And then it all spills out on the floor uh, before anybody can eat it. So I feel like for you, it's like, you know, you don't have to do that much to um, get people, att- keep people's attention or respect from them. You can just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like if you make a big pot of chili and it spills out all on the floor, it's a thought that counts, right? Or, you know, you kind of just have to let loose, you know? Um, there, You have to kind of just be goofy and be yourself, I feel like, and not care what other people think so much. Yeah, Knight of Wands. Yeah, a really good message is going to come through to you on knowing your strength, knowing your worth, Okay, knowing your value, you like the Knight of Pentacles is knowing your value. The Knight of Wands is like how strong you really are. And that's what makes you know you deserve um, your, you know, 
the financial success you deserve, the raise you deserve, right? The bonus you deserve. Maybe you're waiting for that holiday bonus to come in, you know? Like there are things that you know you deserve and you're not going to just sit back and not ask for them. You're going to step up and speak up and say, I know the role I play. I know the part I play. And it's worth, you know, more than gold. It's worth its weight more than gold. But, you know, you have to make sure you're speaking up and letting people know this. <sighs> yeah. I think yeah, <laughs> these are some more funny, fun cards here. But um, I think I'm going to do is give you some... I think this is a good place to stop. And I think I'm going to give you some secret garden cards. Aw, adapt. Yeah, adapting, right? That's fun. You will get yourself where you want to be when you adapt. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and release. Lighten your load. Yeah, that's another good one. You don't have to do things that are so weigh so heavily on you. Dream. Have a cup of tea in the garden and find yourself a good book. I like that. That's a good, another good one. Okay, so those are good. Now, let me see here. I was going to try to read you. Oh, is this one of the chakra? No, oh, I did that one already. Um, let's see. All right, let's see. Love chakra, the sacral chakra, the love chakra. The sacral chakra centered just below your navel is associated with intimacy and pleasure. When your sacral chakra is blocked or out of balance, it can impact your sex drive and lead to the feeling detached. To clear your sacral chakra, find a comfortable place to lie on your back and place a crystal clear quartz citron on a black turmoil on your sacral chakra. Close your eyes and relax. Breathe into your sacral chakra to clear the blockage, restoring healthy energy flow and rest, resetting your passion. So there you go. Like there is ways you can find happiness and peace um, amidst the chaos, amidst the stress of the holidays. And you don't have to be alone. You know, you don't have to like try to navigate things alone. You can ask for help and you can, um, open up about how you're feeling and not hold back on that because it's not good to hold on to the stress and the anxiety that you're feeling. It's good to express that and get that out in the open. Um, Okay, here's a love note for you. Unpack the past. Often our conception of romantic love is deeply rooted in our early experiences. How we experience love in our family dynamics, our first relationships, and our first heartbreaks. In your journal or on a blank piece of paper, consider your earliest experiences of love and how they have impacted your own journey. What lessons have you learned? What good can you build on? What not so good would you like to leave in the past? Okay. That's what I have for you. Love and light always. Thank you so much for watching. I'm wishing you a very happy Thanksgiving. You're going to be fine. You're going to have a great Thanksgiving. Love and light to you all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.